Elements of programming interviews, um, question 4.1, computing the parity of a word, version 3. In this particular version, um, uh, we are going to be using an array-based cache to compute a parity of given numbers. And um, you would use this approach when you're not calculating the parity of a single number, single word, but you're cal calculating the parity for a lot of binary words. In this case, this approach makes sense because you only compute the parity for a given number once, and then you can look up from your cache next time you actually have that number. And um, on a 64-bit system, you know, number of values, binary values you can have is very large to the 64, so we can't really cache it for all numbers. But given the the parity's uh, properties, you know, parity of a binary number, you know, um, you can you can use a smaller cache because a parity calculations associative. You don't care where the number, uh, what, you know, set bits appear. What you really care about is um, the number of set bits. So um, um, it, it's associated. Therefore, you can actually use smaller, smaller bits, um, smaller cache to calculate it. I will demonstrate it with a with a, with few examples. But let's actually start with one example. So imagine. You know, not a 64-bit, but just for simplification, let's say we have an 8-bit binary word and we want to use a 2-bit cache. So the possible values for the 2-bit cache would be, uh, you know, 0, 0 bits, 0, 1 bit, 1, 0 bit, and 1, 1 bit. So if I cache the parity for these 2 bits, um, then I would have a parity 0 for this 1, 1, and 0. And let's say that I'm given an 8-bit number now that I need to calculate the parity for. The, the approach is basically to um, take a look at two bit at a time and look up the parity for that number. So I know for one one, I have a parity of zero. I, for zero one, I have a parity of one. And I have zero one, I have a parity of one again. And for zero zero, I have a parity of zero. So this, with this approach, you're basically looking it up, and then um, you can XOR the results to get the total parity, what the parity is. XOR, this would be one XOR with one, which is parity of zero. Um, but in order for us to be able to look up for, for these two bits in our cache, we would have to align these numbers, meaning that we would have to, for example, for these, most significant two bits, we have to shift this to, to to be the last significant two bits so we can actually pull this number. The way it will work is that, you know, if you have uh, one one, which is the most significant two bits, you would have to shift it one, two, three, four, five, six bits. So you would take X and shift it by six bits. Am I doing this right? One second. So I have this and I'm sh shifting it by, yes, six bits. Then this number end, would end up as one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one. Now I can take this number and look it up in my cache. I would have to do the same thing for the next one, but in this case, I need to shift it only by four bits. And for this one, I only need to shift them for two, bit, um, two bits, and these last two significant, least significant bits don't need to be shifted at all. I can just look it up. Um, but one more thing I will call out before I write the code is that when I take the these two and shift it by four bits, I will still have one one on their left. So basically, when this gets shifted by four bits, we have this number, right? We have zero one, and then one one, and then we have four zeros. So I can't look up for zero one by just shifting four bits. I still have one one and I need to get rid of that. That is where the bit mask come handy. You can take a bit mask of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, and end it with this number to eliminate these two bits. So when I end this number with this particular bit mask, it's going to keep my keep my least significant two bits and get rid of everything else. So basically, approach that we are taking is that we need to, sh you know, we, we're using a cache to look up, but we also need to be shifting some bits to be able to get the number that we need to look up. So 
let's take a look at um, what the code looks like and then um, I'll write the code and then um, I'll explain it a little bit more okay so let's define parity parity which will take a number and um, return us a parity so um, in the real world of course we're going to use a 64-bit word right so our mask size will be will be uh, 16 bits and our bit mask will be 16 bits 16 ones not two ones but 16 ones uh, that would be 4 8 12 and 16 bits and um, I'm going to assume that my cache for the 16 bits, right? Our cache is no longer a 2 bit cache. It's going to be a 16 bit cache, which has 16,536 possible values. So I'm going to need, I'm going to basically assume that there's already a pre computed cache called pre computed parity cache. Okay. So um, what I would do then is basically I would return pre computed parity cache and I need to look up so what I would do is in my cache I'm gonna take my number X I'm going to write shift by how many times three times my bit mask I'm sorry be three times my mask size I'll explain exactly why that is one second when I do that so um, let's assume we have four 16 bits not so assume, but that's the case we have y1 y2 y3 and y4 so what I'm trying to do is take the 16 most significant bits and move it to be the least um, significant 16 bits right in order for me to do that I have 16 32 and 48 three times 16 48 bits I need to shift by 48 to get that number then I'm gonna XOR the result with then I'm going to take a look at this guy, right? The second 16 bit. I'm going to have to move it by 16, 32 bits. So pre computed parity. I'll take my X, shift it by two times mask size. Now, we're not done here because when I shift Y2, 32 bits, Y1 is going to be on its left, just like I explained it here. I need to get rid of that y1 bits right in order for me to get rid of that i would have to bit mask it with i gotta ha i have to end it with my bit mask does it make sense hopefully it does um then that's my second lookup i'm going to xor that result with now i'm going to my third section in this case i only need to shift it by 16 bits which is basically y3 needs to be shift, shift, uh, shifted to here I will just use mask size and I, I again need to get rid of the bits on the left I need to end it with bit mask how are we doing with space we are doing great okay so so far so good and I'm gonna or it with x or it with the last thing which is pretty computed parity look up in this case all I really have to do is it's already last the least significant 16 bits I take X and I don't need to shift anything I end it with my bit mask okay so and I return this so what I had to do was I'm gonna take for Y1 which is the most significant 16 bits in my 64 bit I shift it by 48 and I basically look up in my cache and then I do it for the second 16 bit chunk and the third 16 bit chunk and the fourth 16 bit chunk and when I XOR that I return the result of a parity um, of a 64 bit integer so when you have a lot of words that you need to calculate parity for this is a great approach to um, improve your performance and um, the way you would calculate the pre-computed cache this particular cache here is that for you know you know you would basically go from 0 to 16 by 36 and 
use one of the parity calculation functions that we wrote in version one or version two. And then once you have the pre-computed cache, then you can actually use this approach to uh, calculate it. Um, yeah, basically this is the cache approach of parity problem. And I hope this makes sense.